QuickBooks 2 Estimates, Invoices, and Collecting Cash. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email and phone number. And we're now on Facebook at St. Louis Test Preparation. I wanted to jump over to the QuickBooks and talk about now that we've set up a company and we've funded it, and you can see that in the account balances, the only balance that we have other than equity is a checking account balance of $50,000. Now we're going to create an estimate. So I'm going to go to estimates. And again, this is a tree service business where we cut down trees, remove limbs, take stumps out of the ground. We're a service company that provides services for people. So every job is different. That is, every job has a different um, amount of labor that we use, equipment, gas to get to the site. Everything's different for every job. So if I go to customer job and I click on new, I'm going to enter some information for a client. And so I've added some information for Bob Smith. There's no opening balance. That is, there's no amount that he owes so far. So we've got address information. We've got additional info that we can add in here. How did he find out about us from an advertisement, etc. Terms, we can talk about terms later. Payment information. Does he have an account number with our company? Let's say it's account 123. He may have a credit limit. Preferred paying method. How does he pay? Job information. When did it start? When did it end? Etc. So I'm going to hit OK. So now Bob Smith is our client. Then we go down to item numbers. These are the actual products or services types that we sell. The types of product or services that we sell. So let's enter in to the drop down menu and you can see for this type of business, which is a trade business, we've got all sorts of different things that we can do for people. And you can see that the types of all of these are listed as a service. Well, if I go into my estimate, I'm going to go to new. I'm going to say it's a service. And I'm going to say it's tree removal. New item, it's a service, something I do for someone, and it's called tree removal. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to tie it to an account. And then my account list comes up. This is going to be an income account, so I'm going to record it as job income. So when you start a new item, we're going to record that as a service. What we do when we perform that service is tree removal, and the account that we link it with is an income account because we use that account to create income. Let's see what happens when we hit OK now. You can see that the item tree removal goes into the estimate for Bob Smith. So my description is going to be uh, oak tree 20 feet. That's the tree we removed. And I'm going to say that the total we charged him was $500. I'm going to come up with another category. It's going to be a service stump removal. going to be job income, income we produce. I'm going to hit OK. Stump removal appears on the estimate. I'm going to put stump near driveway. And we're going to charge them $150 for that. I hit tab and you can see that it adds up to a total of $650. And maybe in the customer message, I'm going to put finished by party. Maybe the client was having us do the work before uh, they had an event at their home. So I'm going to hit save and close. Finished by party is not in the customer message list. So let's see what we can put in there. Cancel. So maybe I gotta, I'll put in under add new, I could put in finished by party or I could just get one of the general salutations like, thank you for your business. And I'm going to put in save and close. And the reason that we have that customer message on there 
is that this is something this is something that can actually be sent to a client. For example, we could email it to a client by checking this box. So I'm going to hit save and close. I hit save and close. So if I went into my go went back into my estimates and I hit previous, there's my estimate for Bob Smith. So now I've created an estimate. My next step is taking the estimate and creating an invoice, which means now the person has raised their hand and asked us to do the work. And so now we're creating an invoice because we've completed the work and we're billing them. So I'm going to hit Create Invoice. And here's a way to take the estimate and put it right into the invoice, all the same information from the estimate into the invoice. I click on Jobs, and there's Bob Smith. Now, Bob Smith may have multiple estimates, but right now he's just got one. So when I see Select an Estimate to the Invoice, I click on this one, which is the $650 we created, and I hit OK. And you can see that the invoice fills with all the information that was on the estimate. So I'm going to hit Save and Close. And now I've created an invoice. So far in this video, we've done two things. We created a Bob, we created a Bob Smith estimate for $650. I'm going to put Created. We used the Smith estimate to create an invoice. We just did that step. Now we're going to do step three, which is, well, let's see what the financial impact is. Specifically, let's see the income and the receivable created by the invoice. So if I go over to QuickBooks and I go to Reports, Custom Transaction Detail. Reports, custom transaction details. You'll see that there's a report that shows what happened with the invoice. Let's expand this report. It happened today on 211. It's item number one, the first transaction for 211. The client's name Bob Smith. And it says that we have an accounts receivable if I move things just a bit for $650. Let's click on that. The reason we have a $650 receivable is because of this invoice. And you can further see that the other side of the entry, which is a credit, that's why there's a negative. The 650 is a debit receivable. We have an asset accounts receivable related to this invoice. The second part is we've got income. Income, income, 50, the 500 is the tree removal, the 150 is the stump removal. So we have credits totaling $650 as well. We could look at the report another way. We could go into reports, customers and receivables, and you can see reports that pop up on the right which all have to do with um, collecting money from customers. And if I go to aging account receivable aging detail, I see that we have a current amount owed, this amount from this customer. It's due on today because I didn't put a due date, and it's $650 is the open balance, the balance we haven't been paid. So we could look at it that way. We could also go into company financial profit and loss standard, and we see under job income $650, and we double click on that, and we see the job income which was the credit side of the entry, total 100, 650, that's in the profit and loss. I could do reports, company financial, balance sheet standard, and in accounts receivable I see the $650 for the invoice, and if I click on it, there's the accounts receivable side of the transaction for 650, and that appears in the balance sheet. So to summarize the reports that we can see the income and the receivable for the invoice on, I could go to reports, custom, transaction detail, see both revenue and expense reporting, posting. If I go to reports, company, financial, and I click on profit and loss, I'll see the job income, the income side. 
If I click on the balance sheet, I'll see accounts receivable, the receivable side. Let's now go to receive payment. So I go to the customer payment screen. It says here in this section, select the customer or job in the received from field. That's in bold. So I'll go to receive from. There's my client, Bob Smith. And what loads here is, here's the customer balance, the date, the invoice number, the amount he owes originally, and the amount that's still due. Well, I'm going to enter 650 in this field. Let's see what happens when I do that. It says if you do not enter an amount received, QuickBooks automatically calculates the amount as you select each invoice in the table. So I'm going to hit yes. And it says amount due 650, amount applied 650. I'm going to hit save and close. Now that we've created an invoice and received a payment, let's record a deposit. So I'm going to go to record deposit. And it says in the top left, payment to deposit. Select payment to deposit. So what if I put a check here? You'll notice that if I remove the check, it says no payment selected for deposit, payment subtotal zero. But if I check it, Payment subtotal equals the Bob Smith payment. I'm going to hit OK. Then I come up to the Make Deposits. Now you'll notice at the Make Deposit screen, it says Deposit to Checking on this date. Received from Bob Smith, and the from account is undeposited funds, which is where uh, balances sort of sit in limbo until you get them to the right account, checking, savings, or whatever. It's important that you don't leave balances as an undeposited funds because time can get away from you and it'll be harder to trace where those amounts come from. So it's from undeposited funds. I'm going to hit save and close. Finally, let's take a look at the check register and see where we stand. So I click on check register and I see a general journal entry that I made on the last video, which is the opening balance of cash, $50,000. I then see on February 11th a deposit from undeposited funds for $650. So you see I have a new ending balance. I'm going to hit record. Lastly, let's see where those amounts have posted in my financial statements. If I go to report, company and financial, balance sheet detail I see that my checking account is now $650 higher in my balance sheet and I also see that my net income is $650 because I recorded revenue. And if I click on the detail here I see the transaction by account, the $650 being deposited and if I click on the detail in net income I see those two job income amounts coming through on net income. That's the end of QuickBooks Part 2. We have Continuous Classroom, which is weekly live chats on critical accounting topics, including QuickBooks. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You'll find a complete list of our videos on our website. For live tutoring and chat sessions, our website is stltest.net. You can buy videos of our content. You can buy specifically the Excel, video, Excel documents and PowerPoints that we use to make the content. Some students find those useful because they can click around on the Excel documents and see how they link, and also use them as templates for assignment. Here's our email address and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.